CEO Elon Musk says that SpaceX's first completed Starship rocket could be ready for its orbital launch debut just a few weeks from now, far sooner than most expected. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration's FAA draft environmental review of SpaceX's Starship operations in South Texas suggests the program can likely proceed with its first orbital launch, although protecting wildlife and habitat could be a stumbling block and the approval process is not over yet. The FAA released the draft review for public comment on September 17th and has taken suggestions until October 18th. Two virtual public meetings were equally scheduled on October 6th and October 7th consecutively. SpaceX has cited the environmental review as one of the key milestones that must be passed to start orbital Starship flights, with CEO and founder Elon Musk saying in August that the company could be ready in a few weeks once the process is finished. The overall approval process is broader than the newly released assessment which focuses on the environmental effects of Starship launches and how they can be addressed, particularly in the environmental sensitive area surrounding the launch site near Boca Chica on Texas Gulf's coast. While most of the analysis about noise, launch debris, road closure, and other activities resulted in no significant impacts, a stumbling block came under biological resources. The FAA has determined the proposed action would adversely affect species listed under and critical habitat designated under the Federal Endangered Species Act (ESA). a summary of the environmental assessment results of Starship launches indicated. The FAA has submitted a biological assessment for Boca Chica's terrestrial species to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and requested a formal consultation, the agency added warning it would not conclude the environmental review until this process is complete. The FAA also plans the consultation with the National Marine Fisheries Service, but noted it does not expect any adverse effects to marine species or habitat. The FAA also warned that SpaceX may have to respond to further suggestions, depending on what the public comment process finds. For example, the FAA may end up conducting a more intensive environmental impact statement. It also provided no timeline for wrapping up the work, but that may take at least several months, given that the public has until mid-October to contribute, and the environmental work will now include two other federal services, which have their processes to follow. SpaceX had originally aimed to launch Starship on an uncrewed round-the-world test flight in July, but is waiting on FAA approval before proceeding. Musk has expressed frustration with FAA regulations in the past, saying the rules need to be streamlined if humanity ever hopes to launch rockets with enough frequency to start a settlement on Mars or achieve other ambitious space goals. This time around, Musk has said little about the process on Twitter beyond inviting the public to weigh in. Humanity's future on the moon, Mars and beyond depends upon it, he said. The FAA noted that the environmental assessment assumes up to 20 Starship suborbital test flights a year during development and up to five Starship and Super Heavy orbital launches annually. Musk plans to fly even more Starships every year for Mars settlements. The FAA said in the 150-page draft assessment that a new environmental review would have to be performed if SpaceX ramped up the pace. That said, the FAA would analyze the environmental impacts of proposed future activities, in part by using information developed during the current process, the agency said in its recent statement. Previous Starship launches, which were all low altitude, were able to proceed under a 2014 environmental assessment SpaceX prepared for a proposal to launch Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets from Boca Chica. SpaceX no longer plans to launch these vehicles from Boca Chica, the FAA noted in a history of the launching area. Those launches instead proceed from Florida and California, but the 2014 review dealt with much smaller vehicles than the Starship system, which at around 395 feet, or 120 meters in height, is the tallest rocket in the world. In an absolute best case scenario, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, would release a draft environmental review of SpaceX's orbital Starship launch site, accept public comments for the required 30 days, instantly clear Starbase with environmental approval within a few days of the public comment window, and then approve Starship's South Texas orbital launch license as soon as the necessary environmental permissions are in hand. In other words, the best case ETA of regulatory approvals for Starship's first orbital test flight is arguably late September, and going off of FAA precedent, that optimistic scenario is also a fairy tale. In reality, a bare minimum of two to three months after the FAA releases its draft environmental impact statement is a more realistic best case scenario for SpaceX. On the opposite end, the FAA may decide that SpaceX needs to complete an entirely new environmental review for its Starbase launch site, easily delaying Starship's orbital launch debut by six to 12 plus months. 
That doesn't even account for the potential looming challenges SpaceX might have to surmount to secure an orbital Starship launch license. Given the challenges SpaceX had in securing even a watered-down suborbital launch license for its medium-altitude Starship flight tests, it's not out of the question that the FAA could attach some extremely onerous limitations to that license. Ultimately, only time and the slightest hint of actual movement or urgency at the FAA will tell, and there's arguably nothing that would better apply pressure in the right places than the largest, most powerful, most ambitious rocket ever built sitting, ready for flight, at a brand new launch pad waiting solely on regulatory approval. However, dozens of people had the chance to let the U.S. government know how they feel about SpaceX's plan to begin orbital flights of Starship from Starbase, the company's launch site in Boca Chica, Texas. A majority of the public comments given during an online hearing held on Zoom by the Federal Aviation Administration were in support of the development of Elon Musk's next-generation space vehicle, which NASA plans to use in its Artemis program to return astronauts to the surface of the moon. Essentially, it's a humanity living off the planet, and it's very important for us to do that, Errol Plata, one of the commentators said, in summarizing his reasons for speaking in support of SpaceX. The hearing was held to collect comments on a draft of the FAA's environmental assessment for the program, which is required under the National Environmental Policy Act before the agency can grant SpaceX a launch license for the first orbital flight of Starship. SpaceX has already conducted a high-altitude flight and landing of a Starship prototype and plans to send the latest version to orbit from Texas, followed by a landing of its Super Heavy booster on an offshore platform in the Gulf of Mexico and a soft water landing for Starship offshore of Hawaii. Throughout more than three hours, members of the public who had registered in advance were given three minutes each to deliver their oral public comments on Starship and the draft. Most were in favor of SpaceX, though many positive comments appeared to originate from outside of Texas. A smaller number of people also voiced concerns about impacts on local ecosystems and species near Boca Chica. Sharon Wilcox, the senior Texas representative for Defenders of Wildlife, said her organization is deeply concerned about the direct, indirect, and cumulative impacts, including unplanned fires, debris fall, and debris removal. Wilcox noted that 10 species considered endangered use the area, including ocelot, piping plover, and five types of sea turtle. Many spoke not just of admiration for SpaceX, Musk, and the rockets, but also pointed to the benefits of decades of space exploration up to the present day, including new technologies like GPS and satellite connectivity. Some piping plovers may have to move, but there were always trade-offs, Dan Elton said in his statement supporting SpaceX. The final comment of the night came from Jessica Tetro, a city commissioner for the neighboring Texas city of Brownsville, who said the company's presence has led to a complete reversal of fortune for a town long beset by poverty and economic stagnation. The FAA will continue to collect public comments in other Zoom sessions, as well as in writing through the end of October. After evaluating and responding to the comments, the FAA will then decide whether SpaceX is allowed to move ahead with no or only minor adjustments or if a more intensive environmental impact statement will have to be drafted. If the agency decides an EIS is required, it would likely set back Starship by months or even years. Let us know what you think about the FAA's decision concerning SpaceX's orbital flights by leaving a comment in the comment section below.